All I see is victory. Now I'm going to tell you right up front, you got to decide whether that's what you want to see. You know how it is when some people just use their words so negatively and you think, no wonder they have problems, you know. They walk around, my feet's killing me, my head's killing me, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, those are all negative confessions. You, it, you can use the same energy and say, all I see is victory. And you know what starts coming around you? Victory. Amen. Well, welcome. Word of Faith Family Church. I'm Pastor Steve, and we've got a delightful group here tonight. Hallelujah. And we've got our team, and Uncle Mike's over here too, ready to bang, bang on the drums if we need some uh, drums to help me out. So you may want to, you know, find that cowbell or something over there. Praise <laughs> God. So we got a few things happening, particularly this weekend, my family. Uh, and that is tomorrow morning, I'll be up bright and early. Join me for my cup of happy. And uh, tomorrow, I'm not sure what I'll be sharing. Today, I shared something. I, I didn't think about it till I walked out uh, on the balcony. I mean, I had thought about it before, but, you know, I didn't know that's what I would talk about. And... Uh, and yesterday, or day before, uh, yeah, yesterday, I had some thoughts about how on, uh, in my early growing up, there was a point in my life, I was in the 10th grade, and that summer of being in the 10th grade, I experienced going to a music school at Florida State, and suddenly I was thrust in the middle of 2,000 students who were much younger than me, but they could play they could play, they could sing, they could, and I thought, what have I been doing? I raised myself to a new level by seeing something that was different. And I think that's what we got to do tonight. We got to change our perspective if we want to see more victory. Amen. So join me uh, this uh, Friday, uh, 12 noon, you ladies are getting together over at Cafe Morano. And I promised I won't show up this time. Uh, yeah, I've been around there and y'all didn't even know I was there. I mean, <laughs> oh no, it's not at Cafe Murano. It's at Herp Condo. Hey, that's my condo too. <laughs> Say what? It's not the fourth either, is it? Who put that slide up there? I'm telling you, that's the wrong date. It is this, wait. That's the Christmas thing. Oh, no wonder I'm saying the wrong things. I'm in trouble now, gang. Y'all got to help me. Y'all send nice cards to me tonight because it may be. <laughs> yeah, what address? No, that's the Christmas luncheon coming up. But y'all do have your other luncheon coming Friday, right? Is that right? Yes, you do. And then this Sunday, uh, Pastor Andrew is going to be helping us with leadership it's going to be wonderful. He has done about eight or nine weeks of teaching leadership principles. Many of them we've taught each other and helped, but he's tapped into some real gold, some nuggets. So be here for that class uh, that meets at 930 on Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And this Sunday is our Victory Sunday. Say victory. Because we want to share some fellowship with one another and talk to each other. Stories are how you know there's victory. See, John's an overcomer. I can tell he made it to church tonight, regardless what he's got in his future in terms of operation. And uh, others are here, and they're having some procedures done. But victory is something you talk about and you can experience. And this Sunday, too, uh, we're, we're going to have our Thanksgiving dinner here, and after services, we're... After the service, uh, we'll have it, and uh, it'll be a fun time to hear each other's stories. Amen. And Sunday, we got three different videos. I, I talked today to Pastor Rosella. She's going to be in New York this weekend, but she's sending a, a video from Saturday night when she gets there of all these thousands of kids that she's ministering to, and we'll have news from Nagaland. And on that effort, too... Uh, the um, other folks, uh, we've got uh, Bob and Sonia who are over in France, and uh, their, uh, their video, I've already seen it, it's, it's real cute. The two of them are, are just really neat people, you know, and they love Jesus. And it is a great thing that they're where they're at because they're affecting that neighborhood over there. But Bob and Sonia, 
And um, down in Perpignan, boy, I'm not a very good French speaker. Did that pretty good, Perpignan? Perpignan? Yeah. And uh, then our friends who've been with us, they used to attend church here years ago, Steve and Pam Spear, they're Rhema grads, and uh, they've ta t taken uh, off and starting a huge effort and a school over in Poland. So we're going to support all these ministries and see our seed uh, go farther. We uh, Today, I uh, maybe, no, it was yesterday afternoon, I filled out my paperwork. Every year, we're licensed and ordained through Copeland Ministries. And every year, we have to give a detailed report of what's gone on in our lives and in the ministry life. So I, it was a joy today to talk about those three ministries and chariots of light. Never forget that in the spring and in the fall, chariots of light is something we support. And thousands come to know Jesus during that time. Praise God. Now, coming up for Christmas, it is December the uh, what is it, 12th. Uh, we're going to have an event. And uh, actually... Uh, I'm going to be in it, I'm, I'm sure, and I think Miss Cheryl is, but Miss Saliba Mowbray is putting it all together. Oh, How about that? Yeah. So you're going to be playing, sir. Okay, George is over here going like, yeah, I'm going to play. Uh, that'll be fun. Uh, we'll give earplugs for that part of the... <laughs> But it will be wonderful. We always enjoy our Christmas stuff that we do around here. But we've got to get it together. So this uh, Saturday week, which is uh, November the 27th, that's the day that the Gators find out just how much they can lose by. The Florida State Seminoles play them in the swamp that day later. But during the day on Saturday, we're going to be decorating around here all the Thanks to living stuff and colors will be gone. Trees, different places out there in the fellowship hall. It will look wonderful around here. So you don't want to mess, uh, miss that. Hallelujah. You glad you're here tonight? Amen. Amen. Well, let's get started. Father, we thank you for the word that we're going to hear tonight. We are impassioned to hear the word. We're expecting to hear a rhema word tonight. And we thank you, sweet Holy Ghost, for teaching us tonight. We thank you that we're ready, thirsty vessels tonight, ready to hear from heaven and hear a word that will encourage us to live the thanks-living way. And in Jesus' name, I declare no one leaves here unchanged. And those of you watching, I declare to you tonight, you will be changed if you just stay with us during this service. Amen. Well, let's say this uh, confession before we get into the Word. I love saying it. Uh, take your Bible, shake it down at the devil. What does that do? Absolutely nothing. And you got to realize that the devil isn't scared of, of, of the Word except when it comes out of your mouth. He knows the Word. He probably knows the Word better than many of us, you know. He doesn't know the force of the Word in terms of salvation. So we say it this way. It's the Word of God that you hide in your heart and that you speak out of your mouth and joyfully act on that will change your world and your circumstances in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. The word of truth is going forth. And in Jesus' name, I thank you that we're going to have a great time tonight in this place. Amen. Well, we've been talking about uh, uh, thanks living. And thanks living is such a, a wonderful thing. It, it is really the essence of being a believer. God does something for us, salvation. He gives us the purpose of God, His, His life through us. He gives us the power of God through us. And there's only one response, and that is to say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. So it becomes a thanks-living issue for all of us. Uh, 25th of uh, November, we're going to have the big one. You know what that is. The one you sit around, family comes around, or you go with friends and all. But that big one is a good example of abundant living yeah. because we get to share. We don't have to talk about politics. 
yeah. bunch of many ticks on one thing, sucking the blood and life out of it. We can talk about the joy of the Lord and the abundant life that's before us because the Word's working in our lives. Hebrews 4.12 says the Word of God is quick, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of your heart. The devil, by the way, cannot read your thoughts. That's why you don't need to verbalize them if they're crosswise with God. You need to keep your thoughts and uh, that the intents of your hearts close to what Jesus said. The Amplified, I love how it says it. The Word of God uh, speaks, is alive and full of the power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. Watch this. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating to the dividing of the line of the breath of God, the soul, of the immortal spirit, and of joints and marrow, and the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purposes of our heart. Why is that good for us? Because we often kid ourselves about what reality is. You, have you done that before in your life? Oh, I'm not that much, uh, well, I'm a little overweight, but you know, you, you, you kind of work with yourself a little bit, and you, you talk to yourself, well, it's not that bad. But God knows our thoughts, and he's trying to get us to move past our thoughts and the thoughts of all the stuff that would take us sideways. I thank God that he's got a better plan for us. Amen. Amen. Well, tonight I want to talk to you about abundant living and uh, that we pursue it. And actually, the abundant life that you can have is based upon how thankful you are for what he's done for you. Who you are in Christ Jesus. If all you do is come to church and Sunday and Wednesdays and you never talk to God, you're never thankful for breath, you're never thankful, as, as somebody told me tonight, I, they asked how I said, hey, I'm glad I'm above ground. Every day, every day above ground is a good deal. Amen? We're here to do things. And thankfulness is that. It is an ability never to let time go by without saying, well, thank God. Now, we don't thank God for everything, but we do thank God in everything. It's over in, uh, I, I don't know if it'll be on the wall there, but over in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, here's what Paul wound up telling the, the church at Thessalonica. He said, see that none render evil for evil, and so on. He said then, a couple of short little sentences. He said, rejoice evermore, verse 16, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16. Then he said, pray without ceasing, and then verse 18, he said, In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Then he gives a couple of other things here. Don't quench the Spirit of God. Quench not the Spirit. Despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold fast that to which is good and abstain from the appearance of evil and the very God of peace will sanctify you wholly and pray that your whole spirit, soul be preserved. Thank God. But back to that verse, verse 18. In everything, shout it out loud. In everything, give thanks. Now, it's not for it. So when the flat tire comes, well, praise God, I got a flat tire. I don't think that's what he meant. But he said, praise God, my flat tire is going to get fixed or somebody's going to give me a new tire. Something's going to happen here. So we praise God. We certainly need more of the Word to figure out how to live an abundant life. You cannot watch hours and hours of television and, and all the other stuff. Now, I know a lot of us like to watch sports. Uh, we've got a member that's been around here for a long time. His favorite thing is to watch the cars go around in ovals and circles and things and, you know, move around. <laughs> But then there's some of us like college football or the other kind of football. Then there's our friend Steve Zachwitz. He's going to be here. He and Jenny will be here Sunday. And Steve loves frozen ice and skating on it. And uh, he's played hockey since he was a little kid. And uh, he's got injuries to prove he played hockey, you know. And uh, 
But, you know, we, we certainly in everything can give thanks. And that's a wonderful thing, I think. Thanks to living time is a lifestyle. And, you know, we talk about just a Thanksgiving dinner, but truthfully, if you'll be thankful all the time for what God's doing with you and that you got breath and that you're moving along and you're enjoying the things of God, you know, I think that you really would have a better life because you'd be cheerful. Thankfulness brings cheerfulness. You can't be a grumpy person and be thankful and not have some cheer. You just have to laugh because you know things are going to turn out good. <laughs> oh, Hallelujah. I will. Hallelujah. I will. I will. I will. I will. Bless the Lord. I will. Let me get back up here. I will give thanks. Psalm 9 verse 1. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with my, all my heart. I will tell all of all your wondrous deeds that you've done. See, when God's done something for you and you know it, you don't mind talking to people about it. You know, they say, how are you? Oh, man, God's been so good to me. What do we open up with tonight? God is good all the time. Well, we need to declare that. Amen. We need to keep declaring that. Psalm 100. Go there, would you? There are only five verses, and let's look at it in the message translation. I'm sowing this seed tonight of this particular psalm because I, I really am convinced that sometimes when we are hearing the word, we're used to hearing, well, I've heard Psalm uh, you know, 100, but you need to get used to reading it or listening to it in other translations so you get the meat of the word. Give me an amen. All right, here it is. I did this out at Copeland's at the Bible school out there, and I'm telling you, they shocked me. I did it up at Creflo Dollars when I read it. I don't know how you're going to react tonight, but I'm going to read it anyway. The message translation. Psalm what? 100. Verse 1, a Thanksgiving song. On your feet now, applaud God. Uh, 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 up on your feet now, applaud God. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> the audience is jumping in here. By faith. <laughs> Verse 2, look at this. Bring a gift of laughter. Sing yourselves into his presence. Now that's not a grumpy attitude, is it? You know why you can walk into God's presence and laugh? Because Jesus knows we're going to win. We are going to win in this situation. Amen? Sing yourselves into his presence. No, I got to be quiet. I don't want to disturb God. I was raised in a particular denomination that sang this song often. Enter into his gates, you know. Come before his presence with singing. Be quiet before God. Understand there's a time for that. But I'm telling you, I believe the spirit of joy. In fact, Revelation says there's only silence in heaven for 30 minutes. The rest of the time, it's loud. There's stuff going on. Amen? Go look it up. 30 minutes, King James, and uh, in Revelation. I don't have the verse in front of me. Uh, I don't know if you, one of you folks can turn the air back on. I think it got turned off back there. It's getting warm up here. Br bring a gift of laughter. Everybody laugh out loud for a moment. Ha! Let me tell you something. One minute of laughter gives you a lot more living than one minute of grumpiness. Grumpiness slows you down, kills your spirit, lets the door be opened for the enemy. Verse 3. Know this. God is God. God is God. He made us and we didn't make Him. We're His people, His well-tended sheep. Everybody go, duh. <laughs> he made us. This idea that we can make our own God, don't go there. God made us, therefore we relate to God. Here's the verse that we often quote around here. Enter into, enter with the password, thank you. Say it with me. Thank you. Say it again. Thank you. What's the password? Thank you. <laughs> you know, I saw this meme a while back that said, you know, it said, 
incorrect uh, username and and or password. And I want to say, well, tell me which one, okay? <laughs> you know, is it my username or is it the password? Give me a choice, okay? <laughs> but it never tells you that. But we can enter into his presence with thanksgiving, with thank you. Make yourself at home talking praise, thank him, worship him, amen. Now, fifth verse, for God is sheer beauty, all generous in love, loyal always and ever, forever and ever and ever. Now, that's Psalm 100. There are many more. Uh, thanksgiving, in the other side of this, is that thanksgiving is an action word. It means you must do something. It's not just a mental state. Well, I'm thankful. It means you must act. You know, when somebody gives you something, a gift, what is your normal reaction? Well, thank you. Amen? Come on. When somebody's kind to you and they compliment you, don't say, well, I don't think so. No, say, thank you. They see something you don't see. And that's always true. You look at yourself one-dimensional in the mirror, you know. You, you can see it right there. You can't see all the way around unless you've got a, a three, you know, the mirror that goes around you and you can look at all the angles. That's dangerous. Even a two- or three-sided mirror, that's dangerous when you go to do that. But people, when they compliment you, tell them thank you. Don't go, well, it's nothing. No, it is something. Amen. Have a, a pure grat heart of pure gratitude. Now, how many of you know this lady, Maxine? <laughs> She's the grumpy side of my sermon. Here she is. She's saying, wouldn't be Thanksgiving without some turkey and some stressing. Because <laughs> that is a truth that for me. Now, this next one, don't get offended. But it's a truth, too. <laughs> And after Thanksgiving dinner, the family leaves. Talk about something to be thankful for. <laughs> There's uncle, what's his name? There's aunt, I forgot her name. You know, all those people that come. But Thanksgiving is such a great time for family because we can tell family stories. I, I love that I, my family uh, all lived in South Georgia and... Uh, South Alabama, and we would go different times, you know, we'd have our own Thanksgiving, but then we'd go 40 miles over to Thomasville, Georgia, or, or about 40, 50 miles over to Dothan, Alabama, and all that, and we would, you know, Thanksgiving would go on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you know, and we all had to be back at our own churches on Sunday, but I loved it because there were all the cousins that I could see, and we cousins had lots of questions. We liked to ask questions. We would go, and maybe there was an aunt or an uncle there that we didn't quite know or trust or, you know. I have an uncle, one of them, the one that lived in Alabama, and, uh, and my cousin, uh, uh, is a, she and her husband have a blueberry farm up there, and it's wonderful. Oh, oh not yet, not yet. <laughs> it, it is, uh, it's one of those things that I'm so glad that she's my cousin, and, but her dad, uh, was a, a jokester and a, I don't want to say mean-spirited, but Madison, you'll appreciate this. We didn't grow up with a swimming pool or anything. We had to go to the city swimming pool or to somebody's house that might have a pool and splash around. But my uncle, over where we went or nearby where we went, there, there was a place called Spring Creek. It was spring-fed. It was picking cold water. It was like 60 or 50s, I don't know what the temperature was. It's cold. Summertime, wintertime, it's the same temperature all the time. But he figured out that I was playing around the edges and couldn't swim. I might have been seven, eight, six. So he one day, while we were having uh, July the 4th and all the watermelon and fun there, and there was a little uh, area of sand that went out pretty far. He came over and I was over there playing. He reached down Madison, got my left arm, got my left leg, and he just took me and sailed me out into the middle of Spring Creek. Now, Spring Creek wasn't a real wide thing, but when you can't touch bottom, it might as well be an ocean. And Spring Creek was cold and moving. 
I had to learn to sing, to swim, you know. Dog paddled back, and he he just laughed and laughed. So a little while I, you know, went back down to the sandbar, and all of a sudden I saw this shadow, and he picked me up again and threw me back out there. I'm telling you, it was rough on me. Well, but we kids, when we get together for Thanksgiving, we like to ask questions. And uh, when, you, when you have a Thanksgiving family, big one, it's fun to be around cousins, and you can find out a lot about family. Amen? How many of y'all remember that? You know, getting to a family, and you find out about... Uh, how weird your aunt is or your great-great-uncle. And they tell stories on each other all the time. Well, i got a, a little moment of a video for you here that might help you out on this, okay? Thanksgiving and family and kids and the question, why? Uncle Jeff, have you seen the last piece of pumpkin pie? Mm. What did it look like? Come on, you're like 50 years old. You should know how pie looks. Jeff, 50? Oh, come on. Can you even count to 50? Uncle Jeff, I got some questions for you. Yes? Why do we have turkey on Thanksgiving? Because when cooked properly, every four or five years, it's delicious. Okay, so then why would we have green bean casserole then? Touche. Why can't I just have a whipped cream? But that's the pie. Ah, uh, clearly it's not stopping you. Why did mom have a full plate of stuffing when she's on keto? Because carbs are comforting. Why can't I just lick my plate? If I'm in charge of the dishes, I actually encourage that. Why am I not allowed to sit close to the TV? Why does water taste different in Nana's house? Why isn't Grandpa allowed to have salt? Why is gravy brown? Why am I not allowed to touch the air freshener? Why does Cooper pick his nose so much? Why does Mom call me by my sister's name? Why do we plant all the time? Huh? Why can't I eat grass? Why can't I sit in Dad's chair? Why is Sunday school called Sunday school? Why do cows have four stomachs? Huh? Why do parents whisper when they get mad? Huh? Why do old people write in person? Why do babies have no teeth? Why is baseball so boring? Why do fish have no lungs? Why is Thanksgiving before Christmas? I know why. You know why what? I know why Thanksgiving comes right before Christmas. <sighs> okay, tell me. Why does Thanksgiving come right before Christmas? Because it reminds us to be thankful that God sent us Jesus. <laughs> I never thought of that before. <laughs> I like that. All right, now. Hit me with some of that whipped cream, girl. <sighs> oh, that's good. Um, how do you have my fish? I'm okay. <laughs> okay. I am okay, so this looks good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, oh, come on, tell me you liked it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't want to miss Sunday because there's another one coming that, um, some of you may have seen in the last couple of years, but it's a little bit longer than that, and it's a Thanksgiving dinner, and the various aunts and uncles are all involved in it, so that's good. Praise God, praise God, praise God. If you got your Bible, turn over to Psalm 103, would you? I want to help us tonight realize why we need to thank God, the why, the why, the why. A lot of people think, well, if he created us, why does he need us to thank him? I mean, it was his deal in the first place. He, he, made, it, he made us, you know. Why have we got to thank him for doing what he did? He did it good, you know. Why have we got to do that? Yeah. So Psalm 103, turn with me if you would. Psalm 103, verse 1, and it says this. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. 
Now this is David writing, and he knew this. In fact, David and Andre were of the same spirit. Andre wrote a song about this. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. But here it is. These next verses really lay out what the bottom line is for you to bless the Lord and have a spirit of thanksgiving. Here it is, number one. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits. You see, we can have a benefit party here tonight. You know what a benefit party is? It's, the, uh, it's benefiting somebody. But our benefit party is for what God has already done. Here's what he's done. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Who healeth some of your diseases. Now I know we all go through things that we wonder, Oh God, when is it going to take place? But again... The, the lack is not on his part. It is on our filtering of what the Word's doing in our life. Wigglesworth said years ago, you know, how long do you have to stand waiting on something and believing something? Stand till there's victory. In fact, Paul said it this way in, in over in Ephesians chapter 6. Having done all to stand, here's what he suggested. Stand. stand. <laughs> If you've done all you could do to stand. And I'm telling Mrs. Cheryl and I, we have proved it out through the years. We didn't quit. I remember hearing Jerry Savelle say some of the victories in his life took 15 to 20 years to manifest, but he never gave up on them. Praise God. Well, you know, this is not a like Vegas. You put a few coins in and pull the wheel and get something. God is... God is perfecting us from the inside out. Every great product that has been made by a manufacturer has the quality on the inside, not on the outside. You can take anything, shine it up, make it look pretty on the outside. But it's what's on the inside that matters. You know, like the little girl said a while ago, why does water taste different at Aunt So-and-So's house, you know? I mean, she got used to a certain taste of water. Well, God puts everything he needs on your inside and the qualities on the inside. I love this verse, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee, thee with loving kindness and with tender mercies. Now, people today don't understand those words, redeemeth your life from destruction. They don't know that their lives are on a downward sl uh, slippery slope into a real hell. And I say that lovingly as I know how to say, there is a real hell and some people don't realize how critical. In fact, I saw the other day somebody said, or somebody had a t-shirt that said, don't worry about me, I'm going to hell to the party. And I'm thinking, man, that ain't no party down there. If you don't like root canals, if you don't like, uh, you know, drilling on you, if you don't like pain, then you don't want to go to hell, I'm told. I mean, praise God that we don't have to go. Because he redeemed our life from destruction, crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with what? Good things. We're not talking about just Twinkies. We're not just talking about your favorite, you know, food. He satisfies your mouth. The Lord, when you begin to read the word, taste the word, it is good. So that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The eagles know how to fly. They know how to pull certain wings off so that a new one grows out. And they do live long. And they do prosper. Amen. And verse 6. The Lord ex executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. In other words, sometimes you get in a depressed mode because you are being oppressed. And you have to learn to not give in to the enemy. The enemy in 2 Chronicles, not one enemy, not two enemies, but three enemies came against Jehoshaphat. Three different enemies coming. If you read the book of uh, Job, uh, enemies were coming around him. If, if, if you read uh, the book of Nehemiah, uh, Sanballat, Tobiah, there were three enemies coming after him. And some of them wanted to wind up saying, look, why don't you just come out and let us just sit down and talk. Come on out here and we'll just sit down. We'll cook some food. Come on over. Don't do it. 
In fact, Nehemiah demanded that the, the soldiers, the men and women building and rebuilding Jerusalem, they held a, a weapon in one hand and a trowel in the other. So, you know, the, the thing that puts the mud on the bricks. Uh, they, they were there working and yet had their weapon with them. And three enemies came against them. They still won. Nehemiah still won. In fact, all he did was send a bunch of musicians and the army marching behind them. And they did the march song and they were going. And the enemies, the three enemies, tore up each other. They, they attacked each other. And three days of spoils became theirs. Hallelujah. Verse 7. He made known his ways unto Moses and his acts unto the children of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, that's a good thought. That's a great th place to be. Now, you and I need to realize that joy thrives in an attitude and a spirit where thankfulness is. And I, I, I think you'd be hard-pressed to say that Pastor Steve ever is depressed. Have y'all been around me when I'm depressed? Do y'all remember any time? Or no. Give me a hello or something. No. Those of you watching, if you see my post, if you see my pictures, I'm a happy guy, okay? Now, this isn't a put on or anything, but uh, I chose years ago because of my mother. She used to call me Sunshine. I had asthma when I was growing up and uh, couldn't, couldn't do certain things. So I wound up getting the music out of me through my hands, you know. Couldn't sing, don't sing yet, but, but maybe it's still a dream I can fulfill one day. And uh, George will give me his uh, gifting. He'll work with me. Give me a yeah, so <laughs> thankfulness, though, is the soil in which joy thrives. If you will be joyful all the time, well, I just can't do it all the time. I've got to pout sometime. No, you don't. You do not. Believe you me, the world pouts enough for everybody. And if you're looking for empathy or sympathy and all of those kind of things, I'm telling you, you better watch it. Her Brother Copeland, last week he ministered, uh, well, on Friday or on Saturday morning on the healing meeting in Washington, D.C. He ministered quite a bit on the spirit of grief which brings uh, depression. And depression puts its tentacles in you, and it's hard to get rid of grief. I'm telling you. And so you got to, uh, you know, you can be sorrowful for a moment. Uh, people often say, at least when I was growing up, we lost Aunt Beth. Uh, we lost Aunt Bethel, you know. We lost Aunt uh, uh, Margaret. And I think, where'd you go? What do you mean lost? You know, <laughs> even at my young Sunday school, you know, early age, I think, no, no she's dead, <laughs> you know. But we haven't lost anybody that are believers. They're still here. Amen? Amen. And, and the truth is, you know, the, the Bible keeps telling us and encouraging us that when you move to heaven, you're more alive than you'll be down here. Right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, and Brother Copeland exampled it the other day on that morning, on that healing morning. He said, dying is no more than just taking your coat off and dropping it on the floor. You, Okay, it's just taking that earth suit off. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What are you thankful for tonight? What are you thankful for? I got some Thanksgiving scriptures for you again. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, you know, you need to decide that thankfulness is something that I can do every day. I'm thankful for things. And if you don't have a devotion that you do early in the morning, start with those words. Lord, I'm awake. I think I am. I'm thankful this morning. Hey, I'm breathing. Hey, I got purpose. Don't, don't just think uh, I got things I got to do. Well, welcome to the real world. If you want to eat, you better do something. Amen. But Psalm 105, here we go. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon His name. Make His ways His known. Make known His deeds among the people. Verse 2, sing. Sing psalms to Him. Talk ye of all His wondrous works. Verse 3, glory, uh, glory ye in His holy name. Let the 
heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Verse 4, remember his marvelous, marvelous works, hallelujah, that he hath done his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. So what is it that you're thankful for? You ought to have a thankful attitude about everything going on in your life. Glory to God. I do. I keep joy happening. I keep cultivating. And you know when, you, when I said earlier a couple of weeks ago about cultivating Thanksgiving? Dad Mowbray knows when you cultivate something, you have to dig. You have to improve whatever it is by digging the dirt. You have to... You have to press in. It doesn't happen automatically. You have to till the dirt. You have to cultivate so that it grows well. And we have to give thanks. We have to give thanks. And giving thanks takes some time. Giving thanks like this weekend where we're, 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 we're going to help others that don't have enough food. But we're going to be giving thanks. One of my favorite scriptures coming up is this Colossians 3.15 where it says just that. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you're called in one body, and be ye thankful. Hallelujah.